Lily Adams Beck was a British writer known for her Chinese fantasies. She was born in 1862 in Queenstown, Ireland as Elizabeth Louisa Moresby, the daughter of Royal Navy Captain John Moresby and Jane Willis Scott. She married first Royal Navy Commander Edward Weston Hodgkinson, who died in 1910. In 1912, she married retired solicitor Ralph Coker Adams Beck. About 1919, they moved to Victoria in British Columbia, where she was an active novelist. Her first book, The Ninth Vibration and Other Stories, came out in 1922, when she was 60 years old. She died in 1931 in Kyoto, Japan. We will review her 1924 The Treasure of Ho a Romance. John Maladine is travelling on holiday from his customs job in Beijing to rest at the August Peace Temple, the forgotten place no one ever goes to so the rates are cheap. He is the last of the Devon Maladines who had been in diplomatic service in China some 150 years, since John Maladine the Elder, his great-great-great-granduncle, saved the Chenlong Emperor from disease. When the present John Maladine goes to lie down at the temple, he sees a vision of a hundred years ago of what befell in that same room. Vernon, an old rogue, is seen forcing a Captain Keith to give him his daughter Dorothy in marriage, but she refuses as she loves the gallant John Maladine whom Vernon hates. So Vernon murders her father and would kill John and take Dorothy with him by force. John, seeing they outnumbered, admits he and Dorothy had been secretly married by the Jesuits having a daughter that is two years old. Throwing his jewels to the greedy Vernon, he mercy kills Dorothy with her approval, then gets strangled by Vernon's men. The priest at the time, being unable to save one favoured by the Emperor, devises to not let Vernon escape with his riches and poisons him, though he defiles and condemns himself in the process. The Emperor never sends word as to the riches left behind, and they are hidden in the Hall of Worship. The priest then grants sight of what had happened to his successor, and to all those succeeding him, till John Maladine's kinsman comes and witnesses the night of murder also. He is, however, not the true heir, as the daughter of John and Dorothy lived and married a court minister. John goes to search for her descendants, coming to Beijing at the time of the Boxer Rebellion. As the foreign legations are being bombarded at the secret whim of the Empress Dowager, John goes to Yang Lien, a friend whose family had been friendly to the Maladines for a century. The man, however, wishes to make the Empress Dowager see reason and is beheaded for his trouble. John remains at his house and meets Yang Lien's friend, the blind man of Hupei. A great sage the Empress had blinded because she did not like the horoscope he made for her. John enters his service and there finds what he was looking for. For standing behind the irate Empress's throne is Sia, the great-great-great-granddaughter of John Maladine. The two fall in love, despite the Empress using the old man's powers to sound the future of her efforts to exterminate the foreign devils in China. The blind man has great powers of supernatural vision and sees many events of the past and future. The Empress then wishes to find the treasure of Ho, a friend of the first John Maladine, whose fantastic wealth was taken from him by torture, but not all of it. The present John provides her with a clue to its existence, and there is a long process of going back and forth to try and find it, while also trying to save Seer from the ignoble death the Dowager does not fear to inflict on the Emperor's second wife having her thrown down a well. Eventually, John arrives at the Taralamassari in Mongolia, and meets the miracle-working Hubilgan, but it means nothing as the Empress found the treasure already. After John goes to Mongolia for no reason, he goes to Beijing and is sent away at once, and then goes back to Mongolia with Sia, who was freed by someone else off-screen in a way that made all the worry about how difficult it would be rather pointless and time-wasting, as was the second journey to Mongolia where we hear of the prophecy of the Panchen Lama of Tibet leading all of Asia and subjugating the powers of China as it could not control Tibet for long and, um, yes. And then Sia gets some of the treasure the Hubilgan didn't give to the Empress and they leave. 